once around 3i atlas the interstellar comet this has been uh, widely publicized recently as an amazing new discovery and so i thought i would just take us through what we've known so far but i'm sure we're going to know more in the future so just this month july 2025 a discovery was made by the atlas system hence the name and given the temporary designation A11PL3Z, which is a bit of a mouthful. It was in fact discovered when it was already getting in towards the inner part of the solar system, closer than Jupiter, 410 million miles away from the sun, and coming at us out of the star clouds of Sagittarius. You can see the star clouds in the wide field image and the inset picture there from NASA, showing the tiny little dot against the myriad stars in the background. Now, ATLAS, good acronym, it stands for the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, part of the planetary defense that we have that's looking out for incoming objects. It's made of four telescopes, two in Hawaii, one in Chile, one in South Africa. So it's got a very wide spread around the world and it scans the whole of the night sky several times a night, looking for anything that uh, changes, anything that goes bump in the night, anything that's moving or changing. So uh, the scoreboard on the right here shows that it has discovered uh, 1,200 near-Earth asteroids, of which 110 are considered potentially hazardous as regards impact collision with Earth. 105 comets, and the picture of the comet up the top there, um, 3A, that, that's uh, one of the comets that uh, Atlas discovered. And 4,762 supernovae. So those are not moving, but they suddenly get brighter and then fade. So Atlas notices the change from one observation to the next, either in brightness or in position. And so this is that zoomed in image made into a GIF of this little tiny moving dot against the background. Now it's quite difficult to uh, find it against all of those millions of stars in the star clouds of Sagittarius. And this probably explains why it was able to get so close to us before anybody saw it because of all of the uh, uh, stars especially the fainter ones, which it would be easily confused with. But it was spotted by uh, astronomer Sam Dean and by the ZTF, the Zwicky Transient Facility, which is also looking for things that change. Um, so very similar to Atlas. And with the observations from Atlas, ZTF and Sam Dean, they were able to look at the orbit over a period of a month because some of the observations were pre-discovery um, it was recognized in july but some of these went back into june when they went back and searched in the right area of the sky they could pick it out of photographs and that's enabled the orbit to be calculated which shows that it is on an interstellar trajectory so that means it was moving very fast indeed it came uh, towards us, towards the inner part of the solar system, passing Jupiter, doing 61 kilometers per second, very rapid indeed, getting faster due to the gravity of the sun, pulling it in towards the inner solar system. And when it passes the sun, it will do so between the Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit at just 1.35 AU. The Earth-Sun distance is one astronomical unit AU. <laughs> by when it will have got seven kilometers per second faster to 68. And then it will start climbing out of the sun's gravity well, getting away, losing speed as the sun is pulling back upon it. And it will escape the solar system at 58 kilometers per second. So that by then the gravity of the sun will have retarded it by 10 but it's still got such a vast excess of speed that the uh, path is barely deflected at all. A hyperbolic trajectory, as they call it, um, it has an eccentricity of over six, if you want the mathematical description of that. So here's a lovely image. In fact, it's three images 
long exposure ones each overlaid on top of each other. The stars have all been triplicated as a result of the three image overlay and the object itself, 3i as I will call it, held centered. And what that shows is that the object is a little bit fuzzy around the outside. That's a coma around the nucleus and a little bit of a tail leading off to the right hand side. So this is looking like a comet. Um, and therefore it's the heat of the sun boiling the material off and it will get more of a tail and more of a coma as it gets hotter as it approaches the sun. So that will be interesting to be able to observe. Um, and we think the nucleus in the center, the large dirty snowball is up to about 20 kilometers in diameter, but it's a little difficult to tell until we get some better images. So these things coming hurtling through the solar system sound a little bit frightening. What if one comes our way? Well, this one's not going to hit us. That's good news. It's going to pass the Earth at a minimum distance of about 1.6 AU, which is about as far as the planet Mars is from the Sun. So this is a quite a wide margin. And the reason for that is that although it's between Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit, at the time it makes perihelion, the close approach to the sun, the Earth will be on the other side of the sun from it. And that's uh, well out of the way. So when that happens, it's going to be rather difficult to observe, actually, with the, the sun in the sky. So it'll probably be best observed by telescopes that are well away from the Earth. And unfortunately, that does not include things like the James Webb telescope um, and they very much don't like pointing that anywhere in the direction of the sun because the sun's heat will very badly affect it so it'd be interesting to see which telescopes are able to get the best images of this as it flies past in terms of close approaches though it will go fairly close to mars as you can see on the diagram the orbit whizzes past on the inside of Mars's orbit and that's just 0.2 of an AU that's still quite a long way it's 72 times further away from Mars as the moon is from the earth so it's close but it's not not, not really a near miss and then it passes out going past Jupiter at around about double that distance as it uh, escapes the solar system each of the planets is going to have a small gravitational kick to apply to it. Obviously, the Sun and Jupiter being the prime movers in that respect. So where does it come from? Well, it's very difficult to work out. There are so many perturbing factors in the trajectory of these things in 3D as it sort of dives through the solar system, gets deflected by the sun and out the other side. And we could try to work backwards to see where it had come from. But of course, that might not be its origin. It's probably visited many star systems, closer or more distant passes in each case, and been deflected off of its uh, path by each one. And so maybe at some point in the future, in the dim distant future, some alien astronomer in another star system is going to observe this and maybe they'll be able to trace it back and it'll point back to the sun as having been where it last visited. But it's not really the same thing as where its origin was. Now, it'd be very, very interesting to study that object like this coming from another star system up close and in detail. Uh, but by the time we spot them, it's a little difficult to uh, put a spacecraft together, launch it and uh, chase after it and try and catch it. Uh, they're moving so fast, that's incredibly hard. But we are planning and the European Space Agency estimates a launch date uh, in 2029, so in only four years time, of a spacecraft called the Comet Interceptor Mission. The idea of this is to pre-design and pre-launch the spacecraft and park it out at L2, the Lagrange point, the balance point of gravity between the Earth and the Sun, shown in the diagram there. There are five Lagrange points. L1 is between the Earth and the Sun, where the Earth's gravity is pulling outwards on the object, countermanding some of the pull inwards from the sun and so the 
object takes a, an orbit, but just takes one year, just like the Earth does. So it stays put at L1. And there's a corresponding balance point the other side, where the Earth is pulling inwards along with the Sun, giving a little bit of extra acceleration. And so a wider orbit can still take a year. That's L2, and that's where the Comet Interceptor mission is going to park. Um, and there are several spacecraft there already, uh, including the James Webb Space Telescope. And then you have the other three points, L3 on the far side of the Sun, L4 and L5, 60 degrees ahead and 60 degrees behind the Earth in the same orbit as the Earth. And that, again, there's a complex geometry that uh, adds up to those being quasi-stable. They're not fully stable in the long run, um, but over very many thousands of years, you're very likely to stay put. Or you can, in fact, go into a little um, orbital pattern wobbling around these Lagrange points. And that's actually what they do with things like James Webb. It's not at L2, it's in an orbit round L2 that oscillates back and forth, uh, but roughly speaking, follows around, keeping a million miles out from beyond the Earth. So the spacecraft will park out there and lie in wait for a suitable target. And the, the objective for it originally was to wait for a comet to come in from the Oort cloud on a long orbit out from that reservoir of leftover icy bodies way out beyond uh, the sort of outer reaches of the planets out in the frozen part of the solar system. Every now and again, uh, something gets a perturbation, a small gravitational kick, and comes hurtling into the inner solar system as a comet, and as such, they're very interesting because they've not been near the sun before, or at least not very many times. And so the material is largely unmolested and represents the original formation composition of the solar system. That's very intriguing from a, a chemical origin point of view. But how much better would it be to be able to be ready for the next interstellar visitor? And uh, we've missed 3i because by the time we uh, get this spacecraft, it'll be uh, launched in four years' time. 3i will be out of the solar system and gone, but perhaps we'll be ready for 4i or 5i whenever that gets discovered. We seem to be discovering these with an ever-increasing frequency just because telescopes are getting so much better. And things like the uh, ATLAS and the ZTF and now the Vera Rubin telescope are going to be very, very good at spotting these moving objects against the background of stars. So expect many more discoveries to come. And if you're interested to take a look at the first and second interstellar visitors, 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, then I did a video of this about four years ago now, and that's still on YouTube. There's the, uh, the link to it there. And I'll pop that in the uh, description of this video as well, in case you're interested in what we knew at the time. And maybe I should take a new look at those at some point, because I'm sure we've learned some more since I was able to uh, create that video back during the COVID lockdown period, in fact. Anyway, thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoy this one and do take a look at uh, the previous Interstellar video as well. Bye for now.